Hello comic book guys and gals and welcome to Comic Mag Musings. I am your host, Bill Miller. Thank you for joining for the fourth installment of our Top 100 Pre-Code Crime Comics. Late in 1947, the team of Joe Simon and Jack Kirby began packaging a pair of crime comics for the Prize Comics line. Headline Comics, with a cover date of March, was transformed from adventure to a crime theme. Published with a date of October slash November, Justice Traps the Guilty was a full-fledged crime comic from the onset, and besides Simon Kirby, featured art by Marvin Stein, Mort Meskin, and John Severn. At the same time, Simon and Kirby revitalized Real Clue Comics for Hillman Comics, giving the title a true crime veneer and transforming it from a serial character-driven mystery title. EC Comics began publishing crime suspense stories in 1950 and shock suspense stories in 1952. Both titles featured, in the manner of the EC horror comics, fictional noir-style stories of murder and revenge with stunning art and tightly plotted twist endings. First, the rules. The comics had to have been published prior to carrying the Comics Code Authority seal and the title had to primarily be a crime title. No photo covers are allowed. Lastly, these are not necessarily either the most popular or the most expensive crime books. They are simply the best crime comic book covers, in my humble opinion. It was almost painful to rank numbers 40 to 21, but it was a visual treat. I made a series of five videos with 20 entries in each one, so please join me for the next 20 covers as we count down the top 100 pre-code crime comic book covers. Alright, starting off at number 40, we have The Perfect Crime, issue number 30, from Cross, available in November of 1952. Unfortunately, the cover artist is unknown. We've got a dame in charge of an underworld gang of no goodniks and ne'er-do-wells. This poor fella has a hemp choker and his fate is sealed by a Siggy smoking pistol packin' mama. Doing hard time with number 39 is Murder Incorporated. Issue number 5. From Fox. Packaged in September of 1948. Again, we do not know the identity of the cover artist. This time we have a lovely brunette in a red dress. She's in bondage and methinks that may make it difficult for her to swim. Apparently she ratted out her colleagues in crime. Beware of the company you keep. Threatening us at number 38 is Wanted Comics, issue number 52. From Orbit. Seeing print in February of 1953. The cover art is by John Buscema. We have another blonde in a red dress being accosted by a robber on a lonely street. Her scream is muffled so as not to attract the attention of the oncoming bus. Even at this early stage, John Buscema was bursting with talent. Brass knuckling at number 37 is Parole Breakers, issue number two, from Avon. Hot off the presses in April of 1952. The cover artist is William Stanky. A lovely painted cover. The plain yellow background forces you to focus on the lovely raven-haired paroled convict and her menacing shooting iron. Stool pigeoning at number 36 is Crime and Punishment, issue number 66, from Lev Gleason. Printed in March of 1954. The cover art is by Alex Toth. 
with a battle for keeps in the foreground involving a knife, a club, and some sort of metal device seemingly similar to brass knuckles. In the background, we bear witness to a good old-fashioned melee. At number 35 is March of Crime, issue number one, from Fox. Out sometime in 1948. Alas, the cover artist is unknown. Tis an honest-to-goodness gun maw leading the charge against the boys in blue, her green nightgown falling just enough to reveal a bare shoulder, among other things, as she starts banging away with that trench broom. Gambling with number 34 is Murderous Gangsters, issue number one, from Avon. in circulation in July of 1951. Although we're uncertain, the cover artist is believed to be Lee Ames. We have a voluptuous, soulless woman in a red dress, seemingly held hostage by a gun-toting ruffian who isn't too keen on surrendering to the authorities. Great colors and fine details on the exterior tenement stairs. Machine gunning at number 33 is Guns Against Gangsters, issue number one, from Curtis, out in September of 1948. The cover art is by L.B. Cole. Aside from the rich colors, this doesn't seem like a prototypical Cole cover. This dapper Don is certainly a stereotypical gangster, and he is going out in a blaze of glory. The spotlight piercing the night grabs your attention and draws your eye to the mobster. Robbing at number 32 is Prison Break, issue number one. From Avon. Hitting the stands in September of 1951. The cover art is by Wally Wood. We have quite a looker on our hands in the form of a blonde in a slinky green dress hiked just above her stockings. She calmly smokes her Chesterfield and waits for her convicted companions to break out a stir with her Chicago piano at the ready. At number 31 is Crime Mysteries, issue number 13, from Trojan Magazines. Produced in May of 1954. The cover artist is Al Hollingsworth. One word, wacky. This gat-packing troublemaker failed to notice death as he captured her heinous crime in his painting. The colors in this image are top-notch and the painter's beret is awesomely over the top. Extorting at number 30 is Fight Against Crime. Issue number six, from Story Comics, hitting the shelves in March of 1952. The cover artist is Bill Fraccio. What a terrifying cover. The thought of drowning wet cement is nightmare inducing. The officer is in chains, and lest a miracle occur, he seems destined to join his skeletal partner in the afterlife. Murdering at number 29 is Crimes by Women, issue number 5, from Fox. Published in February of 1949. Sadly, we do not know the identity of the cover artist. Let this be a warning for you. It is of the utmost importance that you spare no expense when choosing your partners in crime. Choose unwisely, and you may just get double-crossed like our hole-digging friend here. I love the deep red backdrop and the frail baddie's orange dress, blue overcoat, and matching green necklace and bracelet are fabulous. Throwing Knives at number 28 is Exposed, issue number one, from DS Publishing. Available in March of 1948. 
Yet again, we do not know the identity of the cover artist. We have a crime of passion with a blonde in a red dress being choked by her fella. This cover has risen in prominence over the last few years. Death is standing in the water as a prominent observer. The trees frame the scene perfectly. Pistol whipping at number 27 is Crime Does Not Pay, issue number 43. From Lev Gleason. Packaged in January of 1946. The cover art is by Charles Biro. This is one special delivery no one wants to receive. A gruesome cover and a fellow is returned to his wife bound, deader than a doornail, and with a warning note pinned to him with a knife. The red bow matching the woman's dress is a nice touch. Putting cement shoes on at number 26 is Crime Reporter, issue number two. From St. John. Seeing print in October of 1948. The cover artist is Matt Baker. Hubba hubba. We have a blonde stage performer sprinting from her disheveled dressing room, her robe barely covering her skimpy outfit, with a bad man hot on her heels firing his pistol. A wonderful cover. At number 25, we have Gangsters and Gun Malls, issue number four, from Avon. Hot off the presses in June of 1952. The cover art is by Sid Shores. How awesome is this? We have a sexy gun mall firing a rod toward the back of a speeding car as her gangster companion fires from the driver's seat toward the coppers. Her gloves are fantastic and I like the detail of her reflection in the side mirror. Bootlegging in at number 24 is Lawbreaker Suspense Stories. Issue number 15. From Charlton. Printed in November of 1953. The cover artist is Dick Giordano. Ah, must be newlyweds. Nothing says I love you like a splash of acid in the face. This is a rough image. I like the use of the mirror and the woman's smile is wicked and disturbing. Rum running at number 23 is Manhunt, issue number 14, from Magazine Enterprises. In circulation in 1953. The cover artist is Dick Ayers. This cover is absolutely bonkers. We have a blonde in a red dress in bondage. A creepily smiling tiny man is either administering something or extracting something with a hypodermic needle. The look of terror on the woman's face is pronounced. Great colors and a truly disturbing image. Hypodermic needle covers are highly coveted among many Golden Age collectors. Billy Clubbing with number 22 is Crimes by Women. Issue number 4. From Fox. hitting the stands in December of 1948. We do not know the identity of the cover artist. This is one of the more desirable crimes by women issues. We have a lovely ginger checking her makeup after she seemingly killed the prostrate man behind her. The ciggy smoke conceals one of her eyes but fails to hide her cold, calculated demeanor. And extorting at number 21 is Crime Suspense Stories, issue number 20. From EC. Hitting the shelves in December of 1953. The cover art is by Johnny Craig. This is quickly becoming one of the more sought after issues from this run. A classic grisly hanging cover. What pushes this image over the top is the graphic nature of the man's broken neck. His shadow adds a horrifying impact.
And that will do it for numbers 40 through 21 as we count down the top 100 pre-code crime comics. I hope you enjoyed the video and I hope you got to see some books you either haven't seen before or haven't seen in quite some time. Please leave a comment and tell me your thoughts. Do I have some ranked too high or too low? Were there some that shouldn't have made the list at all? I'd love to hear your feedback and don't forget to join me for the last installment as we count down numbers 20 through 1.